When I was listening to this song for the very first time, musically, I immediately thought about Frida's solo albums from the 80s, especially Shine. But I think No Doubt About It also captures the essence of the entire Voyage album in more than one way. Let's talk about this fascinating fifth single from the album, and also find out where is that single, and what makes this penultimate track on Voyage so appealing. So, no doubt about it starts with this Japanese flavor beginning, as my friend over at All Kinds of Collecting aptly described. It then kicks off into real rock pop territory and with a chorus, and as quickly as the song began, it's over already. Yes, it runs for just under three minutes and it's the second shortest track on the album, but it also moves very quickly. And you could say the same about the entire Voyage album. Once you start the journey, it goes by so fast. There's an incredible flow to it. And the curious thing is that the album alternates between up-tempo and slow songs on almost every second track, with the exception of Just an Ocean following Don't Shut Me Down. You would think that this is counterproductive in terms of the overall flow, but I think this is one of the reasons why the flow is so impeccable. Exactly that ambiguous variation in tempo from song to song. It draws you in. Now, that's what I also feel within No Doubt About It as a song itself. As I said, it moves quickly, and seems to be very straightforward, like the entire album. But at the same time, it also has many facets to it and so many moods, like the album. So let's explore these variations within this one song. One of my first thoughts was that the verses seem to be very different to the chorus. The verses are slow, almost cautious, the chorus is rocking and extremely pushing forward. And for quite some time, I wasn't too sure if verse and chorus fit together very well. That's just my personal opinion. But the more and more I was listening to this song, the more I felt that this might be exactly what continues to draw me in. I was always very hyped with a catchy chorus and its punchy drums, but by now I also absolutely adore the verses. The bass lines laid by Benny on synthesizer are marvelous, but especially Frida's vocals are actually quite soothing, and she sings it very soulful. Then comes the chorus, and she is rocking away so powerful and strong probably like never before. This is elevated even more with the additional harmony vocals by Agneta and Frida, which I am lost for words now to describe. This is Frida's second lead song on the B-side of the album, and the way both ladies join together on chorus is quite similar to Agneta's second lead song on this B-side, so there's another interesting symmetry. And like the ambiguous variation from song to song throughout the album, as I said, we can also find this on No Doubt About It in the musical contrast between verse and chorus. But that's only one of the many variations within this song. Not only does it start with a chorus, but on the second verse, it completely strays away from what you'd be expecting from the first verse, and it moves into what I think is one of the greatest bridges I've ever heard. I think the flow between this second verse and the bridge is so seamless that you could almost forget it's a bridge. At the same time, it comes so unexpected too, which just adds to this feeling of ambiguity and variation. But other songs wouldn't be as complete without content, without the lyrical input of Björn. And once again, the story he's telling and the words he's using are not only an addition to the music, they complement it as good as ever. This is what Björn had to say about the song. I've known a few people who kind of flare up and can't help it, but then very quickly sort of get calm again and say, sorry, sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. So it is this woman in that situation she is incensed with her husband, who is very calm. He knows, he just waits for it, and in the end it comes. But these lyrics are not only dealing with variations of mood, they are variation. Every verse has different lyrics, sure, that's the way it usually is. But this time, every chorus is largely different to the other. And that's something which I don't think we've ever had before in any other song, correct me if I'm wrong, and which is generally unusual. Sure, there is always some degree of variation from one chorus to another, like on the track before, where our protagonist is feeling carefree as she listens to the hum of bumblebees. But in the end, she's feeling sad, 
for those who'd never hear that hum. But on no doubt about it, the lyrics in each chorus are so different that they really continue to tell the story. But that's not the only variation in these lyrics. Within these choruses, Björn also finds a remarkable amount of variations to express apologies. In the first chorus, Frida sings, I messed it up, I take the rap, this one's my mishap. In the second chorus, she feels sorry by saying, I made a mess this time, the fault is mine, I take the blame. And in the final chorus, she's basically proposing that she could make amends. So what Björn expresses from a storytelling point of view fits very well to the musical variations of the song. That ambiguity between verse and chorus, the bridge after the second verse, which feels seamless but also unexpected. All of these variations are reflected in the narrative, in those mood swings that the lyrics tell us in every line. And in the big picture, it really captures the essence of the album itself, which delivers so many moods from song to song. In February this year, the song was released as a single, but only as a single to radio. We even received an email with a quote from Frida about the song, but there is no physical single. So what does all of this mean? Well, the ABBA Intermezzo International Fan Club shed a light to this, and they explained that the song is the new focus track from the album Voyage, and that a focus track is the mostly streamed song of an album not already released as a single and will be considered for the single charts. In the first two chart weeks after release of an album, only the focus track, which is the mostly streamed song of the album not released as a single, is considered for the single charts. All other tracks of the album are excluded from the single charts. By now, people have reported that the song has been played frequently on UK radio. Frida said about the song, No doubt about it could be about me and my beloved one, but if you look upon any relationship with some sense of humor, you will certainly come out of it with a smile. Until next time. Quite a few friends have let me know that they feel as if Björn has written a song about themselves, that they can relate to what Frida is singing. They too can get mad and upset very easily, but also feel as if their partner is too good for them. My friend Sam felt like that, and he also agreed with what I said in the very beginning, that the song has strong 80s vibes, which reminds him of Frida's solo work from that decade, especially Shine. But it somehow also reminds him of Abbas Elaine, and the up-tempo rock feel is on par with songs like Tiger and Hole in Your Soul. So, concluding our episode, I wonder what it must have been like when Björn and Benny were presenting this song to the ladies. Okay, here we have a real rocking song for you. And Frida was probably like, let's do this. Agneta, let's spell it all out. They are giving their all, it's mind-blowing, and the more the song progresses, the more powerful Frida and that third voice gets. And towards the end, they literally do not want all of this to end. Frida.